I think we're good to start our rounds of introductions. Um, Jan, would you like to start? Sure. Hi, hi everybody. I'm, I'm Jan Freywald, Executive Director of ReefCheck. Um, and I think I've met all of you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't really have, have that much to, to say um, other than that we're really excited about this collaboration with Coral. And um, this has been kind of in the making for, for a while as the Allen Coral Atlas kind of took shape. And so um, thank you so much for, for joining us. And, and I hope this will really be the beginning of, of many collaborations kind of on the global level, but also on the local level um, for all of you. And um, yeah, I guess I'll hand it over to you guys um, for introductions. Well, I'll just say hi, this is Jenny. Um, it's great to see faces. <laughs> We're usually corresponding by email, so um, it's great to see you. I just want to thank you for attending. And I know there's quite a few uh, other coordinators and trainers that's going to be watching the video. So hello to them as well. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And then I uh, will uh, hand it over to Helen from Coral Reef Alliance. All right, thank you. I, I don't know as many of you. My name is Helen Fox. I'm the Conservation Science Director for the Coral Reef Alliance. Uh, and as Jan mentioned, we began these conversations when I was the field engagement lead for the Allen Coral Atlas. So it's been great to see it evolving and continuing to do so. Uh, and now very glad to have this uh, bleaching monitoring project that uh, we can continue to collaborate on. Um, so now, yeah, I'll pass it to Ben. Hi everyone, it's nice to meet all of you. Um, like Helen, I don't think I know many of you, but it's great to, to see so many folks here. Um, I'm Ben Charo, I'm the program coordinator at CORAL. Um, and yeah, we'll just echo what other folks have said. It's just great to see so many folks um, and great to be on board with this project. And I'll pass it on to Andrea. Hi, thank you. And I would love to go last. So if I could pass it on to um, Alvin. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm uh, working with Reefshack Malaysia. Uh, like Jenny said, right? Like, it's nice to see some faces. I feel like I've been emailing some of y'all for years now, but <laughs> finally can see y'all. Uh, yeah, so uh, very uh, happy to be here and interested to see, uh, to learn more about uh, using the Coral Atlas. Julian is trying to log in, but he's having some issues. Uh, so Julian's the Reef Share Coordinator from Malaysia and he's trying to join in as well. Uh, so he should be joining soon. So um, I'm Jenny D. I'll call myself Jenny D. Um, I'm a reef check a trainer and course director here in uh, Koh Tao in Thailand. Um, I've spoken to, I think, Jenny and Al Ben has come to visit me, which is lovely. But it's so, meant, so nice to see so many faces and uh, put a face to that name. And it's quite exciting to be a part of this. So thank you for the invite. And also, we've got my husband here, Simon. I think Alvin's met, but not anybody else. Thank you. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Delta from Rivsec Indonesia. I work with Rivsec Indonesia. And yeah, thank you. And I will join the meeting. And funny thing, it's my first time to face to face with Jenny from Rivsec Headwater, even we very frequent uh, collab, uh, coordinate with uh, in email. Yeah. Thank you. Maxwell. I think we are missing Maxwell, right? I Yeah. So uh, uh, my name is Maxwell Seal. I'm a, a volunteer coordinator here in California as part of one of the several regions here in California. I've been with ReefCheck for the past few years now, and it's been really, really exciting to see both the kelp forest monitoring program 
develop through the years and our team really grow. And in addition to that, I think it's amazing to get to see how many awesome faces are working abroad as well. And I think that just really echoes like the reach uh, of the program itself. It's really inspiring. So congratulations to all of you for your hard work. <laughs> Well, thank you everybody for for joining in. It's really um, a pleasure to to be able to to host this training and to get to know you um, a little bit more. Uh, my name is Andrea Rivera Sosa, and I work as the project and outreach manager for the um, Corif Alliance. And I we work as the partnership also with the Allen Core Atlas. So you'll hear me talking about um, the the Atlas a lot through the presentation as well. And um, Ben Charo, you have already met. Um, he'll be helping at the end also with the Q&A questions. So if you have any questions along the, um, uh, throughout the training, you can send them through the, the, Q, the Q and A. So this is a uh, collaboration with many organizations um, the Allen Core Atlas and Reef Check and other organizations that are also joining in. And um, these are some of the people behind um, the organization. Some of them are already here and you've met. And um, today we'll be covering um, and recover and recording today's webinar so that other people can also um, share it uh, with other Reef Check surveyors in other locations in the world. And we'll cover a general introduction to coral bleaching and um, the Allen Core Atlas. Also, I'll show you a quick demo of the bleaching monitoring tool and how it works. I'll provide some general guidance for coral bleaching field surveys. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about the um, bell transect, which which you already um, know, but I'll try to focus on how um, the information from the Bell transects is useful for the validation of the Atlas. And, um, and then at the end with the, with the Q&A and some interaction. So we all know that coral reefs are a critical uh, marine ecosystem. They host 25% of marine species from only 1% of the surface of the ocean, and they provide so many uh, benefits to, to humans. Uh, but there are risks, and one of these risks is um, climate change. So we know that the facts are clear and that our world is getting warmer, and it's because of us. So 97% of publishing climate scientists agree that global climate change is real and it's a result from human um, activity. So um, the increase in marine heat waves um, is causing more recurring and more extreme coral bleaching events. Um, using Australia's Great Barrier Reef as an example, we can observe in this graph how over the, the last four decades, the, um, uh, the GBR has been hit with mass bleaching episodes, and this year was the sixth um, event. So a recent study by Spatty et al. mentions how this year it represented more accumulated um, stress than ever before during the summer period for um, the Great Barrier Reef. And this was the first mass bleaching event to occur during uh, La Nina, which usually brings um, cooler water. So um, we are still waiting on some of those results from the, um, uh, from the aerial surveys, but it has been um, quite, quite an impact. So the bleaching alerts for um, this first half of, a, of, the, um, of the projections show that there's been a warming um, and that that warming started escalating around um, March. And then in April, it started to, um, to decrease. But the um, projections for, um, for May to August do not look so good for the, um, for the Pacific. So this is one of the reasons why we would like to um, jumpstart the, the networks uh, for monitoring core bleaching in these 
um, in these locations. So we all know that healthy reefs can uh, be affected by coral bleaching and then can lead to coral mortality if those um, heat stress continues um, over time. And just a quick review on coral bleaching um, and how it can occur. Um, well, usually they can become stressed from high or low water uh, temperatures and other factors um, in water quality, such as um, light um, or low tides as well. And the stress causes a symbiotic algae to produce an excess in oxygen, uh, which results in a buildup of toxic waste products. So the host expels its symbiotic algae, leaving the coral bleach white without its um, built-in food production source. So bleaching can be complex and many intrinsic factors like those you can see in blue. Um, and there's many external factors like those you can see in gray and they can all have an influence. Um, so in this training, we'll focus more on bleaching triggered from heat um, heat stress exposure. And now shifting scales from talking about symbionts and, and coral bleaching to talking about um, seeing coral bleaching from satellites, um, I'd like to talk to you about the Allen Core Atlas and how um, we recently launched the bleaching monitoring system. It, it helps track coral bleaching events in near real time. And the idea, and we hope that this tool will also help conservation uh, research and education uh, initiatives. So the Allen Core Atlas bleaching monitoring system uses satellite imagery that's available from uh, 2021 at um, 10 meter resolution. And it's available globally for all of shallow coral reef areas that have been mapped by the Atlas. Um, and we hope that through this training, you'll learn more about how it works and how your um, collaboration through Reef Check can help validate and strengthen um, the tool. So the bleaching monitoring system starts processing these uh, satellite um, images from Sentinel-2. And um, and the it starts processing these satellite images when a region enters a NOAA bleaching alert uh, due to warmer waters. So the atlas measures the bottom reflectance or the brightness of coral reefs in alerted areas in biweekly periods until there is no stress. So it's linked um, and initiated by the NOAA uh, bleaching alert. So it does this uh, by detecting a baseline color. Usually this is done during periods of colder water that are usually three to four months. And so it, it, it creates a, um, this baseline, this average of brightness, and then it compares it to um, the brightness of reef areas during warmer water. So as temperatures continue to rise, uh, we know that coral bleaching can occur and this can change the brightness or the reflectance values that are observed um, from satellites. And this difference between the baseline and the brightness is what um, is perceived as the um, reflectance. So the, the atlas can detect three different bleaching categories based on the number of weeks that that brightening um, has occurred. And they range from low to moderate and also um, to severe. So here I invite you to um, explore the Allen Core Atlas website. And I would just like to show you a quick um, example of what it looks like. So once you go to the website, you toggle on the, um, um, the bleaching uh, section that you can see here towards the right. Let me see if I can push this up. Um, and here you can change the dates and it, you'll get this, this screen. Um, so then afterwards, you can select a certain area that you want to explore. For example, here I'll show you the 
um, the Great Barrier Reef, and we have selected here uh, March 14th. You'll see the three levels. And then you usually don't see um, the bleaching because you have to really zoom in to be able to see the, um, the, the readings. But here you also see like you have different, um, different uh, information that you can see, benthic, um, satellite, reef imagery. And if you toggle on the core reef watch, you can also match the scale of the, the, the date. And here you can pick different um, heat stress indices. Here we can see that um, there's the bleaching alert from NOAA that we talked about. And we can uh, further zoom in to this location. And you can see that it, it starts picking up um, the bleaching on the sides, but we have to further zoom in to see it more closely because it has a 10 meter um, resolution. So here I clicked off the core reef watch. So now it's just gray, but if we zoom in, you can further see the, um, uh, the low bleaching for this region. And if you further zoom in, you can see how it's surrounding the, the island. Um, so something, if we want to further zoom in, um, we could do that. And something really important that I want to show you here with the benthic map is that when you toggle on, uh, you have different benthic categories that you can select. I've selected the coral algae here in, in purple. And so this layer um, is only available for the coral and algae class of the Allen Core Atlas. Um, that's something in, important for, for you to take into consideration once we go on um, further on the training. But um, so this is what it looks like and you can explore different areas uh, where you're at. Um, this is just another example of, of another location in the, in the GBR. So here you can select um, the further dates and then you can explore um, more into your area of location. So to continue on to some general guidance for coral bleaching surveys, um, I have a few, um, a few tips. The first one is um, site selection. Um, so perhaps you already have set sites or you might be establishing new ones. Um, here, um, it can go both ways. So there may be times when the ATLAS team may have a special ask for certain locations that need to be surveyed, or there might be other times when reef check surveyors spot bleaching first, um, and then do a request for, for survey. So both of these options can be possible. Um, here, the most important um, item to note is that the habitat where, to know where the habitat of where the survey types are taking place. And ideally it would be best to have replicates of shallow sites that are up to 10 meters because the, the satellite has the limitation to be able to um, observe the shallow reefs up to 10 meters. Um, so it's also important to please note if these are exposed or shelter sites from, um, from wave exposure. So the second tip is to georeference the site as best as possible. So many times the GPS locations are taken from the boat rather than the site that you survey. And this is a big problem for us because one of the main requirements of using um, field data to validate satellite-based products is that we have to have a, a very precise um, GPS coordinate. So it should be taken to best represent, represent the site. Um, in the case of the reef check transect, ideally this would be done in the middle of the transect at about 50 meters. And now we'll give you some pointers on um, how that can be done. So the third um, guidance is to survey corals during peak bleaching events. And this is ideally uh, 21 to 30 days post peak um, degree heating weeks. 
So the surveys may not be representative if they're done too early or too late um, during the bleaching periods. And usually the timing of the peak bleaching system, season varies among ocean basins um, and hemisphere, but it's generally during the local um, summer times. And also if you're able to survey corals two to three months after bleaching peak, it's great um, to be able to assess some of the recovery and the, um, and the mortality. Hopefully they won't, it won't be too much mortality, more than uh, recovery, but it's good to have this post-assessment. Um, and then the fourth one is uh, coral bleaching can be colorful and not always white. So this has been observed all over the world. And it's important to be aware of these normal colorations of the um, corals in the area that you monitor. Um, this coloration is thought to ask a, to act as a sunscreen that may aid um, the symbiont reestablishment. So here are some photos of the different neon um, colors observed in different locations. Also, it's important to note that some corals may naturally appear white, pale, or with lighter parts. And this is very important for um, when you are training different people who are just learning the, the methods. And this is the case of Montserrat Cavernosa, for example, in the Caribbean, which has a variety of pigments, um, including a white phenotype that it was one thought that it was a bleach colony, but it's actually a, a normal coloration. Um, also in the Pacific, um, where you have uh, Acropora species, many of the white uh, growth tips uh, tend to lack pigmentation and, and that can be easily confused as uh, bleaching, but it's actually normal. Um, and other species such as Orbicelas that have naturally white um, bumps that lack pigment, but um, it's it's important to um, to just go over those um, pictures with different um, people and when they're learning on how to identify bleaching, so that bleaching is not um, overestimated. Also, another topic that can be quite complicated in certain times is to distinguish recent mortality versus bleaching. So usually when we're out serving and we see a white colony, we um, immediately think that it might be um, that it might be bleaching, but it could be that it's actually um, recent mortality. So um, be aware of the white of the bare white skeleton that can be observed. And sometimes there's different predator bites um, from fish and snails and fireworms. Those are easier to, to identify because they tend to be smaller. But um, when we have larger areas such as uh, from crown of thorns mortality, um, it can be a little bit um, complicated. So just beware of, of that. Um, and also within your um, within your trainings. So those cover just some general guidelines. Um, we have um, different ways that people monitor um, coral condition, and we're using different methods to be able to validate. Um, the, the satellite readings that I was mentioning from the Allen Core Atlas and. We partner with ReefCheck, and as ReefCheck surveyors, you know the organization um, very well. So in the following section, rather than going through the methods that you know are probably better than I do, um, I will focus more on how this information you collect um, on the transect is extremely useful for the validation and for the, um, for the atlas. So, ReefCheck, as you know, combines four different um, components into a 100 meter transect, and it has four um, different components. So for a minimum of what we're looking, we would require, for example, the substrate, 
the invertebrates and the impact um, surveys. And we wouldn't require fish, but if you're able to, to do the fish surveys, um, it would be ideal. Uh, but for the bleaching assessments, um, the substrates and the invertebrate impacts would be the, the minimum requirement. Um, and ideally the best location to georeference the site um, and this is something new that we're requesting, would be in the middle of the transect. So something that's very important for us is to be able to know exactly where that um, transect is laid out. So for example, if one of the um, um, leaders or somebody that, you know, it's very um, handy in the water could set up a buoy, um, like a, a sausage, um, buoy from the middle, from the 50 meter mark. Um, ideally, they could set it up from there. And then once they're um, out in the water, they could, um, with the GPS, mark that point where the buoy is in the, in the, in the water and then recover it back. Um, something very important here is also to note the direction of the transect with with a compass so that we know if it's north to south or, or east to west or um, the direction. Um, so in the substrate survey, you all know um, no bleaching is detected, but this is very, um, knowing the substrate type is very important for the atlas because we're able to understand the benthic cover. Um, the atlas might mistake areas of sand with bleaching, for example, or um, so by having the exact benthic cover is always um, very important to be able to match better the information uh, from the atlas to, um, to the benthic substrate. Um, and this is important also because with all bleaching surveys, this is not always possible since uh, bleaching surveys may sometimes collect only data at the colony level. Um, so these studies are great uh, for bleaching susceptibility, but not for satellite um, validation process. So now in the invertebrate and impact survey, um, this is the moment uh, and the data that we would be waiting for, the percent coral of the total population in the transect and the mean uh, percentage of the bleached colonies. So this would be the information that would be uh, recorded and that would help us also validate um, the bleaching. And as you know, you, record the information for the four um, set of the transects for the different data sheets um, in, in the different locations. So the information would be entered into, um, into the, it, it would be sent to the reef check coordinator. You can also enter it in Mermaid or um, coming soon will be the new platform. Um, that's currently under construct on the construction with the global reef tracker, and this would allow us also to be able to obtain um, the information um, right away. So something that's very important here in the logistics is that we would be um, developing a Google request form, which will we'll talk about in a little bit. And this would have a brief description of um, our project. And the idea would be for you to um, share the information of the site names, the lot, the um, GPS points, the depth, and then you'll have an area for the, um, the budget that you would be requesting. We have availability for Six hundred to a thousand dollars for the for the surveys, and this can be used for you know to cover funds uh, such as gasoline or tank rentals, boats, um, and important to note that we um, have can have special considerations um, if more funds are needed, but funds are limited to cover all the reef check um, locations. 
So this is what the um, bleaching um, reef check request form looks like. We are gonna be following up with the link and also more information on um, what I've covered today. And in terms of expectations, um, the idea would be that reef check survey teams can propose sites, but the Allen Core Atlas can also, if we see bleaching that's occurring in a certain area of interest, um, we can also um, try to, um, to see if there can be some coordination to do some sites in, in those locations. So it could be both ways. And also other selection criteria that's important to have into consideration. We have the depth limit of 10 meters. Um, also areas need to be previously mapped by the Allen Core Atlas. So I mentioned that the bleaching detection tool is only available for the coral and algae class. Um, so this would be important to, to double check. Um, There's some areas that the Allen Core Atlas has not been able to map due to um, turbidity issues. So this would be something to check. And ideally sites that have previously been surveyed before, but we don't think that this might be a problem because we know that um, reef check has had such a large reach all over the world. And um, ideally these sites monitored would have a, glo a global distribution, but that's also going to depend on what areas undergo bleaching um, this year. So we have already reports for, um, for Fiji. And if you know of any other locations that might be experiencing bleaching, uh, please let us know. So we have reached um, the end of the, of the presentation. And this is just a final recap of what we've um, covered so far. So um, ideally to respond to a coral bleaching event, um, you would want to do it in five different ways. And first one is to identify a monitoring program you already have with Reef Check. Um, we've covered some of the satellite based warning systems with the Allen Core Atlas and also the NOAA. Um, learn the survey methods, you know the survey methods are and are teaching other people to, um, to survey. And then the third one would be to be prepared to respond to secure the funding and then the team that can help you out in the in the water. And something very important here is also to come up with a general strategy to reduce stressors. So different organizations can work with um, NGOs or marine protected areas to also set up this um, reduction of, of stressors um, strategy that can be um, also um, conducted at the same time that those, sur those surveys are being conducted. And then finally, um, having the data synthesis um, that can then feed um, the validation process of the, of the Allen Core Atlas. So we have reached the questions and answer sections and um, Ben is also going to help me moderate this, this section. Hopefully you'll have um, many questions. Um, so I invite you to, to put them in the Q&A or also to raise your, um, raise your hand so we can um, give you the, the word. Thank you very much for listening. I just saw that Julian um, just joined in. I'm going to promote you as a panelist um, so that you can also join in the conversation if you have any questions.
Okay, I see Alvin. Alvin, I, please go so for I it. Just, <clears throat> I just want to uh, double check one thing you mentioned earlier. So the sites that we are going to monitor must be sites that have uh, already been, uh, like they are already up on the coral um, atlas, is it? Yes, ideally, ideally there are sites that have been mapped um, because otherwise the, um, the bleaching detection tool only works for those areas that have been mapped. So if it's not mapped yet, then we wouldn't have anything to validate. So it's, that would be kind of um, not so um, useful for us, but there's also other initiatives that are trying to um, better, like increase the um, the mapping um, of certain areas of the atlas. But I think that's going on right now. So I think ideally would be areas that have been mapped. And if let's say um, we we are able to do surveys in a particular site, but it's not mapped yet, is there? And we can help with the mapping, for instance. Is there, uh, how do we like get it uh, up on the coral uh, atlas as well? Like, do we, can we assist in that part of it? So, right now, the atlas is going under a second initiative to map certain areas. I am not sure, Helen, about Malaysia. I think it's being mapped, remapped. Yeah, I, so the Atlas has done initial mapping everywhere and there are some locations that are getting remapped. And I'm, I think that might be right, but I'm not sure. We, could, we should definitely follow up and, and confirm one way or another because if it is being remapped, it will be relatively soon. Mm -hmm. So I don't wanna say that it's, it's too late to provide data to remap certain areas. Um, but we can connect you with the mapping team to see um, if this is possible or not. And then also it would be ideal to double check that area that you're interested in to see if it's already mapped or not. Thank you. Thank you, Alvin. And Derta. Yeah, uh, I will uh, ask and give some information uh, very slow. <laughs> my, my English is not really good. So first of all, I already met with the, let's say, Alan Coel Atas people in Indonesia with Wen Wen. And we already discussed about the, the data and the map as well. And the, um, my one and only question for this section is how, how we validate in your last Slide how we validated the data to to Alan Coral Atlas. I'm not really clear with the with the how, how we validated the data. Uh, because in Indonesia we have a check network Indonesia from west to east, and almost in every main island uh, we have monitoring schedule, but mostly conduct in October because in Indonesia we check the uh let's say celebrate in october and october is not hot season based on our experience of coral bleaching uh hot season is yeah maybe next next month yeah may to june and to 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 overcome that uh, we also develop uh coral bleaching network in indonesia in 2010 and the network if uh Good, good information about the bleaching, but uh, to the uh, resources, the network only uh, on mostly only gave information about uh, bleaching or not in the in the area. And 2016, yeah, we we got uh, much bleaching. The the network, the coral bleaching network, adopted by Ministry and Marine Ministry of Marine Fisheries and the network getting bigger and the network uh, give information about the, the uh, bleaching 
Indonesia and we use uh, at the moment uh, we firstly we use the Nua I forgot five by five yeah five by five kilometer or 15 perfect <laughs> I forgot I will ask uh, Mark Ekin but uh, Indonesia is very unique because you know like uh, many many factor climates as well and then the local 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 factor uh, somehow make like Bali and the Nekbok Island have different degree heating weeks. That's why we. That's why the the reason we develop the the network to to be the what's called like first eye first eye in the coral reef to to give information uh, uh, to for the reef manager to decide they conduct. They waiting or they conduct uh, main monitoring because because we have some lesson learned that the reef manager conduct monitoring no bleaching but next month <laughs> they get the worst bleaching so so that's why in Indonesia we have a coral bleaching network to make uh, bleaching monitoring more efficient uh, and in the in the good timing I think I think that's all but my my question. How we validate data to ACHA, so uh, maybe we can, uh, uh, yeah, we, we can talk about the, the from Indonesia to, to give a validate data for uh, coral bleaching, especially that uh, very, yeah, of coral reef Indonesia very fast and what yeah, we, we can compare Bali and Raja Ampat or Bali with the ACHA or in Java. So that's why uh, very complex. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Derta. So I think it would be ideal, um, and and it all depends on the coordination network of of Re Reef Check um, Indonesia. If maybe some surveys can be done in in the next month. So you you mentioned that the bleaching season is in um, in May, right? May May June. Yeah, mostly because May and June in Indonesia like no cloud, no wind, no wind, wind, wind. Yeah, no wind, and that's mm -hmm. why, uh, like we, we call it hot season, and mostly must bleaching occur in in June and uh, sorry, in May and June. May uh, somehow June. we we find we hand, we find high degrading week in November, December, but because it's raining season and many cloud uh, wind that's why uh, we uh, we not find uh, bleaching okay you get my point sorry yes 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 no i do i i understand so yes ideally i would recommend and and we can further also um connect on the on a follow-up to see if it's possible to have um re reef check surveys done um, earlier this year. It happens um, in many locations that sometimes the, um, the monitoring seasons don't, um, don't match. But the good thing about reef check is that um, it can, I mean, you already have the trained um, yeah. teams. So that is also an advance because it, you know you can respond at, at, at any time so we can work on yeah. trying to figure out the timing um also because that can also be tricky we're working with yeah. that with with the atlas to figure out the the best timing for surveys and then i would also be curious to connect with you afterwards to learn about other um this this coral bleaching network that you're talking about in in indonesia especially because the atlas um has a lot of uh, work with you know Indonesia and when when and I know there's going to be a training soon um well later this year actually um, in Indonesia yeah, so, yeah. like yeah my respond uh, can I one more so yeah that's that's our challenge to change from October yeah reef check day to to hot hot man yeah hot man yeah in in May and June that's a challenge because the network conduct check monitoring in let's say in October yeah our reef check day in Indonesia they conduct it uh, independently by their budget and they already have 
system fundraising, blah, blah, blah. That's why they put in October. <laughs> and if we move to, if we move from October to uh, May, yeah, we will still, we still try to find the, the, the way, the way and the, the system. Because if we move from October to May, they, they have to change the system fundraising, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. I understand. Maybe it can be some extra, extra surveys. So, um, but yeah, I I would definitely follow up with you on on that to see how how um, how we can work together and and um, survey um, because it's it's coming up, <laughs> it's coming up soon. Um, okay. Does anybody else have another question? Um, I don't see anybody's hand raised, just Alvin, but I don't know if it was the same from, from last time. <laughs> oh, Jen. Yeah, I'm just going to say that um, in the last week or so that maybe we've seen the water temperature change in uh, different dive sites, like in like maybe three, four degrees, and it's, yeah, getting very hot, and I think it's, uh, yeah, Things are starting to bleach a little bit earlier down here at the moment. So we'll hopefully be able to go out and do more surveys on a more regular basis. Okay, right. and can you remind me the, what area you're in, um, Jen? We're, we're Koh Tao, Thailand. And you're in Thailand. Okay, so you already see some yeah, the, sailing. Yeah, the Gulf of Thailand. We certainly are. Gulf of Thailand. Okay. So yes, this makes me think that maybe we um, we need to come up with a system where we can also make recommendations on the time to survey different locations. Um, since you're already mentioning that you're already seeing an increase in temperature, then we would want to know when that peak is, and then during the peak, do the do the monitorings. Um, and do you think you would be able to to do the monitorings during a peak season of bleaching? You think you would be able to yeah, go I out? I think we could. Yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely going to be uh, within the next month. I think it seems to be getting sort of slightly earlier. So yes, we'll be able to go out and do a couple of surveys. Okay, that would that would be great. So I will follow up also with the um, um, with with Jenny and the, and sending the form, and then Reef Check um, would be the organization that would be distributing the the funds to to help right. out with the surveys. Awesome. Great, thank you. Okay, I'm just taking a few notes. Um, anybody else have a question or a comment or if you've heard of bleaching occurring in any um, other location? Um, yeah, we started to see some in Malaysia as well, but just very little and only in the uh, very shallow, like within the first two meters, but uh, it started to bleach. And we are also working with NOAA. They supplied us with one of these smart buoys. So we, we have that as well. Um, and it did show a higher temperature than the average, historical average. But um, then we had storms like rain. It's been raining almost every other day. So the water has cooled again, and uh, we're not seeing, uh, like even the, those that were initially paling in the shallows have started to uh, get back their darker colors. So um, it'll all depend now how the weather falls on. Uh, but yeah, we, we are very often in the water, same like with Jen, I'm guessing, because uh, of all the different other work. So we'll keep an eye out, uh, and then if anything, we'll let you all know. Lah. Okay, perfect. Good to good to hear that. 
um, the waters are are cooling over there. And um, yeah, the smart buoys um, are quite useful too to be able to monitor the the temperature in real time. So so that's very very useful. But um, great, thank you. So I am conscious of time. And um, I just wanted to show also some of the, um, the resources that we have available. Well, you know, the, the Reef Check um, website, we have a Reef Resilience course by the Nature Conservancy and the Encore Atlas. Um, it has an um, introduction to remote sensing and also a component on how to use the Atlas. And there's many also um, resources on the YouTube channel and um, videos looking at um, how you can use the information of, of the Atlas for your, um, for your locations. Um, and there's newer, um, there's also new additions of seeing marine protected areas and calculating um, like the benthic habitats for different areas. So I, I highly suggest that you visit the, the site. But without further ado, um, just really um, share my, my gratitude with all of you um, for joining in and also um, to please share the word with other reef checkers if they're interested in, in monitoring and please stay in touch. Um, please feel free to, um, yes, stay in touch. And um, yeah, I'll open up again the, the, the space if you have any um, last questions or any other comments. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much um, for, for doing this. And thank you everybody for, for joining and yeah, please, get the word out there if there's others that you think might be interested. Um, it'd be great if you if you tell them about. And we know that there will be more people watching the recording um, that, that couldn't make it today. So, um, but feel free to pass it on too. Yes, thank you. We'll be sharing this recording with other locations um, in the world as well. Um, we couldn't make all the time zones work at the same time. So that's the, the virtue of having it um, also um, recorded. So thank you again, and um, we'll be in touch. I will follow up again with the information um, via, via email. And um, thank you again for joining.